Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to give you some tips for cleaning, storage and lubrication of your vintage lenses. All these lenses are getting rather old now. Some of them are a hundred years old or even more and they will develop faults as time goes by. They may well develop fungus or haze, so it's very useful to know some basic servicing and maintenance tips to keep them in order. It also means that if you're fairly confident, you can buy lenses that already have haze and fungus, clean them up and um, uh, get your lenses for a lower price than you usually would. These lenses will deteriorate if they're not looked after properly, but if they are looked after and if you know a few maintenance basics, they'll probably last you as long as you want them to last. So the first thing we're going to look at is storage and tip number one, and this might very well be the most important tip for vintage lenses, is keep them dry. These lenses are not weather sealed and there's a lot of metal elements fixed together with gaps between them that water would love to get between if it got half a chance. How might water get into your lenses? Well, the most obvious culprit is rain. Don't take these lenses out in the rain. They're not weather sealed and water will get in from rain if, uh, if you take them out and get them wet. Another way that moisture can get in is from your hands. Skin gives off water and quite a lot of it too, a surprisingly large amount of it. If you hold this lens in your hand for very long, the radiating vapour from your skin is going to get onto these uh, surfaces and if you hold it for long enough, it will get into the lens. Condensation is another way that lenses can uh, acquire water content. Um, that occurs when you move from a cold to a hot environment or from a hot to a cold environment. As soon as the temperature equalises, any water that's developed inside the lens, any condensation should leave the lens. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Also, I wouldn't worry too much about humidity. Um, I had a comment the other day or the other week from somebody worried about um, humidity and lenses. Firstly, there's not much you can do about humidity. It's in the air and, and you know, it's around whatever you do. There are dehumidifiers you can buy, but I wouldn't worry about that unless you live in a very, very humid climate. I'm in the UK, we often get very high humidity here in the UK of up to 80, 90 odd percent. And I've never had any problems with water in lenses from a humid environment. So in a similar way to condensation, I wouldn't worry too much about humidity. It's a good idea to store your lenses in some kind of cabinet or cupboard where they're not going to be open to the air or to any dust. and. What I do in my camera cupboard is I keep a couple of containers of rice in there so that any moisture that gets into there, the rice is going to absorb it. Rice is very, very good at absorbing water and it's a very useful thing to um, keep in your camera cupboard to prevent too much water getting into the lens, too much moisture getting into the lens. There are other things you can use as well. Rice is a very commonly available and it works really well, but there are other little things like little silica packets that you can buy that will absorb water. So there are a number of ways to do that. For me, rice is the easiest and best and cheapest and simplest way and it works. Tip number two is keep them free of dust. There will always be some dust present in a vintage lens. That's inevitable. Every time you turn the focus ring, elements are moving, you're sucking air in and out. Um, zoom lenses are the worst for that, but even prime lenses do it to some extent as well. So there will always be some dust in a vintage lens. And even if you strip it completely, clean it and put it back together, still you're going to get some dust out of the air 
in your lens and there's not much you can do about that unless you're in a laboratory environment so the key really is don't have too much dust in your lens if there's loads and loads of dust in your lens that's going to degrade the image but a tiny bit isn't really going to matter as for what haze fungus etc actually look like well i can attempt to show you using this lens this is my om zuiko 50 millimeter f 1.4 it's a lens i've used a very great deal I recently discovered there was some fungus inside it and of course I wasn't too pleased about that. However, using it, I'll be able to show you, hopefully, um, what they look like. When I first got the lens, um, the person who I bought it from said there was some haze in it, but I never could see any haze in it. And it wasn't until I held it up to a strong light that I could actually see, yeah, there really is some haze in this lens. So let me attempt to show you what it's like. So shining a strong light through this lens, you can now hopefully see that in fact, there is a fair old bit of haze and fungus inside that lens. Hopefully I'm lucky and it's behind the front element. If it's not, if it goes deeper, then that would be beyond my abilities to repair. I wouldn't want to go too far into this lens because it's actually quite a complex one. And one important thing, if you do find a lens of yours has haze or fungus, take it away from the others because it's quite possible that the spores from the fungus inside a cupboard, for example, are going to fill that space eventually and get into all the lenses. So if you've got a fungusy lens, keep it away from all your other lenses. OK, so to clear any haze or fungus, you're going to need to open your lens. And to do that, you're going to need a good set of tools. The first tool you will need is one of these. This is a lens spanner. It's made specifically for slotting into the rings on the front of a lens uh, here and undoing and twisting that ring out. So there's our lens spanner and you can see that it's got two ends. On this end it are straight slotted screwdriver type ends and on this end are points, just uh, simple points. And this tool can vary its width by unscrewing these screws. So you just vary the width according to what you want to, uh, the size of the lens rather that you want to use it on. So there is the Minolta PF rock or lens and you can see just there just in front of my fingernail there is a little slot just there cut out for that lens spanner to slot into and a corresponding one on this side so to use our lens spanner we just pop it onto those points I get the width right so then we just turn the spanner and we undo the ring like that. Another tool you will need is a good set of these things. These also are referred to uh, as lens spanners I believe. Sometimes they're called lens cups. You can see that this is just a piece of plastic is all that is and if you have a faceplate, very often lenses will have a faceplate. The uh, Olympus has that uh, faceplate there. So this little plate here has no gaps in it for a lens spanner. So your first step with this Olympus lens will be to use this lens cup to push down hard and turn that ring out. So a good set of these is important. If you don't have these or if you don't have the right size it's very easy to improvise. Just get the right size cup or mug or glass, put a little blue tack around the edge, push it onto your lens face plate and twist and that is a very good sort of Heath Robinson way 
of opening up a lens with a faceplate with no cutouts for a lens spanner. You will also need some good quality small screwdrivers and I cannot emphasise enough how important it is to get a good quality set of these. And I know that because I've learned it the hard way. I've bought several sets of cheap ones. They're made from soft steel. They're not hardened steel. They'll do you for two or three uses, but as soon as you meet a difficult screw, it's going to be the screwdriver that bends rather than applying that force to the screw. If you get a good set like these, these won't bend, these won't break, and they'll last you as long as, as, long as you want to keep them. A good set of screwdrivers, of small screwdrivers, is absolutely essential to any camera maintenance program. So those are your three basic tools. They're not expensive, they're not difficult to find, and you will find that with them you will do far easier and far better work than without them. Do invest in the right tools if you're going to open up a lens. Now, you don't need me to tell you, I'm sure you're already aware, lenses are very complex things, and some are very complex indeed. So, when you're going to do any dismantling, or when I'm going to do any dismantling, I have a golden rule. I'm not a camera engineer, so I have a golden rule. Keep the dismantling minimal. Do as little dismantling as you can to achieve what you want to achieve. I had a, a nice aluminium bodied Carl Zeiss Jena Biotar lens which looked very simple to take apart and it was quite simple to take apart and I think because of that simplicity I was a little tempted to go f further than I should and I did go further than I should and I very nearly ruined that lens. I very nearly couldn't get it back together. Um, in the end I did and I was very fortunate to uh, achieve that but I wouldn't attempt that same repair again. I went a little too far. Basic maintenance is simple, but if you go too far, it'll turn into a nightmare and you could well ruin the lens. I applied that rule when I was servicing this lens. This is my gold standard for 50mm vintage lenses. This is the Carl Zeiss Jena Pan Cola 1.8 50mm. And I bought this lens with fungus. I did take a little risk. I'd never opened a CZJ lens before. I've heard that they can be very complex and I think the aperture mechanisms in particular are quite complex. As it turned out, it was a really simple fix. The front and rear glasses come out very easily. I'll show you a little more closely. So there's the CZJ Pancola and if you can see, I don't know if you can see there, the front element is held in by one simple ring that unscrews with a lens spanner, as is the rear element also held in by one simple uh, ring that is removable with a lens spanner. So I was able to remove the front and rear glasses on this lens, clean them up in vinegar, um, clean over, wipe over very carefully the elements that were exposed when I took out those front and rear rear elements and I've never had a problem with this lens since it's it, it was a, a very successful repair I'm pleased to say but I wouldn't want to go any further with this lens that's the most I would do with this lens if there had been fungus further in behind elements that I couldn't get to I would have left the job and uh, giving it up as a bad job because I'm just not confident enough to go much further. As I say, some lenses are more complex than others and some are really simple. Let me just pop this back on here. Some lenses are really simple. The collapsible lenses are very, very simple to undo. The front and rear elements come out simply, the, the internal elements come out simply and they're a really simple lens to service and they're made even simpler because the focusing helix, too much light, oh dear, the focusing helix 
is exposed. It's right there. So there is no difficulty getting into that focusing helix to lubricate it. And as I say, there's no difficulty taking out the front and the rear elements. They come out with a lens spanner and these collapsibles are very, very simple to undo. We'll be doing a little servicing on this one shortly because the focusing helix has actually seized up on this one. This is a Fed 10 coated lens that was very kindly uh, lent to me. And the focusing helix is a bit of a mess. So we're going to have a look at that. Also, another very simple lens to do is the Helios 44. This is a really, really simple lens to service. The front and rear elements come out with a ring. There's the ring for the front element. And there is the ring for the rear element. I think it's the inner of those rings. There are two rings there. Can't quite recall which it is now. The middle elements come out very easily indeed. And the focusing helix is accessible if you undo these three small grub screws. There's one there, which I hope you can see come out the way. One there, which I hope you can see. And there are two others around the perimeter of the focus ring. So undo those screws, slide the focus ring backwards and the focusing helix will be visible on that lens also. These Helios 44s very often have oily blades. What happens, I think, is the focus mechanisms get sticky over time. Old grease dries out and people just squirt oil into them as much oil as they can. It, it does free off the focus ring, but it also gets onto the aperture blades. So these are very, very easy to clean but very, very common to find oil on these blades. So let's have a look at this little fed collapsible, very kindly uh, given to me by viewer Derek Holmes. And as you'll see, it's almost totally seized up. I can hardly move that at all. It was working better than this when Derek sent it to me about a year ago, but it's not doing too well now. What happens is old grease dries out, so it loses all those little compounds that make it greasy and, you know, movable. So we need to replace those. So what do we do? Well, we're just going to add a couple of drops of oil to it. Um, light oil is best. Don't use WD-40, though, because uh, that's not really quite what we need. We need a strictly an oil. So I'm using light oil here. Let me bring you over here and show you what we're going to do. So there's our lens and we're just going to put literally, literally a drop or two onto that focusing helix. So we just dip the screwdriver in there. Get some oil along there. Um, we'll do it to the other side. Be sparing. That's the key when you're doing this. Be very, very sparing because if you put too much on, well then, that's going to migrate onto your aperture blades and onto your glass. And you'll have to strip the whole thing, which of course we don't want to do. So we've got a little oil on there now. Let's see how easy that becomes to turn. And already it's far easier to move. It's far more willing to move. We're not fully there yet. Let's get a little of that oil onto the rear part of the helix. Be particularly careful when doing this on a collapsible because if you do get too much oil on these parts, it may go onto your glass, it may go onto your aperture blades, but even worse, it could go inside your camera. And you certainly don't want that on any camera, but especially if you're using a digital camera, that would not do at all. 
So where are we now? Come on, let's have a little bit more from you, matey. That's it. That's getting much, much easier to turn now. And we've pretty much now reconstituted that old grease. Yeah, that's moving quite nicely, actually, now. It's moving very easily and very simply. Don't forget, the key is minimal lubrication. We're talking drops here rather than any larger quantities. Finally, we'll just give it a little wipe over. We're just wiping any excess lubricant off there and making sure that nothing goes into the camera or gets where we don't want it to get. Okay, that's nice and clean now. So that's a pretty successful repair. I'm very happy with that. And it's brought this little lens back to a point where I can use it again. And that's really nice. It's always nice to reconstitute, revitalize and renew old machinery. And that now is very light and very easy to move just as it was when it was new. So a good, simple, easy repair. I mentioned that the Helios 44 was simple to repair and it really is. The front and rear glasses come out easily. The middle glasses come out easily. And the focusing helix is easy to um, re-lubricate. All you need to do, I think I mentioned this earlier on, but it bears repeating. All you need to do is undo one of these uh, three of these screws around the perimeter here. One, two, and three there. And that's a very nice, simple, easy lens to do. Let's just undo those screws now. When you're loosening these little screws, these are called grub screws because they're so very, very tiny. When you're loosening these little screws, don't remove too much. Don't remove them too far. If you remove them too far, it's going to be extremely difficult to get them back in again because they are so very, very tiny. So again, minimal on tightening, minimal dismantling. There's the focusing helix just down inside there. You can see that quite clearly. I hope that shows on the video. Um, so so that's the part that moves on this one it's nice and easy to do but if it was sticky all you need to do is the same thing a few drops of oil onto the focusing helix in there another lens again that's simple to do is this one the Industar 61 this is a very common lens very cheap lens and it very often has a sticky uh, focusing mechanism that's the usual fault that afflicts these lenses again just like on the Helios there are grub screws there's one here and one here and another one here so again just loosen those screws move it forward move this ring forward lubricate your focusing helix nice and easily. The only other thing that's slightly different on this lens is that you have to take off this plate at the back here. Yeah, take off this plate at the back here. That has some grease behind it which can cause the lens to be sticky also. So just remove that and clean it and then pop it back. Very simple, three screws, take the thing off, clean it, put it back, screw it back together a nice easy lens to do some servicing on. Now I have to say I do always feel a little bit unsure of myself when I'm opening a lens. I'm not a camera engineer, I'm not a lens engineer. So there's always a, I always approach it with a certain amount of trepidation and because of that I think because of that I go very very slowly and very very methodically and that's the way to approach this. If you go slowly, if you're methodical, if you're cautious and take your time and don't try to do too much, you will be successful in what you want to do. 
Some lenses are more complex. The Carl Zeiss Yanas are more complex. The Olympus Zwico lenses are a bit more complex. They're not all as simple as these nice simple Russians that I've been showing you today. But there is only so complex that a mechanical vintage lens can be. Don't forget there are no electronics involved here. There are only levers, springs, gears and things of that sort. So if you're methodical, if you're careful, if you take your time, there's no reason why you can't service any lens but start with a simple one don't try and run before you can crawl so coming up next week we've got a review of this fantastic little camera the fujifilm xe2 i really liked the xe1 and i really like this one as well because it's got the same sensor as the xt1 so it's got very beautiful uh, fuji sensor in it that's coming up next week Soon after that, we've got, what have we got? We've got a, a TT Artisans 50mm f1.4 full frame lens to look at. There's a quick preview. And we've also got an episode on this little pen half frame, this Olympus pen half frame film camera. A beautiful little camera. And we're going to do a, a brief comparison. We're going to go through this camera, um, shoot some film in it, see what we get and we're going to do a brief comparison with the pen epl8 the digital camera that my friend alan has lent to me very kindly to make an episode so hopefully that will be an interesting episode this is a fantastic little camera it was sent to me along with a bunch of other cameras including this lovely kodak retinet by viewer verna brit so many many thanks for that verna much appreciated. So that is it from me for this week. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that jolly old bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you like to support it and to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography and you can do it for as little as one dollar per month. As ever, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.